Hey, Ryan Dice here with kind of an embarrassing video for you. See, I want to tell you about one of my biggest marketing flops that I've ever made uh, and what I learned from it. So here's the story. Back a couple of months ago, I made the decision to kill my blog. I shut it down completely and I thought that uh, we were going to move things into a slightly different model, slightly different direction. Well, it turned out it didn't work at all. It was a really, really, really bad idea. But uh, before I tell you kind of what all went wrong and what I learned from it, I want to tell you my logic behind it so that you can understand sort of where I was coming from. So in marketing, anything in marketing and business, I hate sporks. I really, really, really hate sporks. Now, if you don't know what a spork is, a spork is a utensil that is like 90% spoon and like 10% fork. So you've seen it before, right? It's a spoon with little tines on the end. They suck. They're horrible at everything. In trying to do two things, they succeed in doing neither of them very well. If you ever try to eat cereal with a spork, you wind up poking yourself in the lips and gums. At least I did. And like the milk all gets through. Try to eat spaghetti with a spork, good luck. All right? They're worthless. They suck. So in all aspects of business, one of my rules is I don't have anything to do with sporks. Now, the conclusion that I reached of late, and again, totally wrong. Let me say that again. It was a bad test, but the conclusion that I came to of late is that blogs were sporks. Blogs were the spork of marketing. They weren't as good at email when it came to distributing information, but they weren't as good as Facebook when it came to going viral and being social. So that was kind of the theory that got this whole thing started. You know, in the past, blogs made sense, but now they're kind of passe. We don't need blogs anymore. You know, blog, blogs made sense, but now there's Facebook fan pages. You know, we can put our, our, our content up there. It'll go a lot more viral. You can have a lot more fans and you can do a lot more with it, right? So that was my logic behind it. So here was the test. This is when things, by the way, went horribly, horribly wrong. All right. So the test that we did is I made the decision to end free, okay? I decided that free content was done. I wasn't going to do it anymore. If you wanted content, then it was gonna have to be paid, okay? Content had to be paid. And kind of my inspiration, and not, not blaming you, Gary, okay, this wasn't your fault, but kind of my inspiration for this was Gary Vaynerchuk. I mean, I saw him go out there and, and he kind of was shifting over to, to a micro payment model where it was like four bucks a month um, to essentially receive videos from. I was like, that's brilliant. That's it. This is where everything is headed. The market is moving away from free content on blogs and it's moving towards small monthly fees. So I said, that's it. We're done with free. No more free. Free is dead. Content is going to be paid. But my thinking was, yeah, but, I, but I, I don't want to totally lose the relationship building aspect with my customers, my members. So where are we going to do that? Well, I decided that relationships were going to be done on Facebook. All right. So if the content was going to be paid and it was going to be distributed primarily via email and in membership sites and things like that, and the relationship was going to be done on Facebook, well then, what was the point of blogs? You know, there, there was no point. And that was why I said, I made the drastic move. Okay, I'm killing my blog. It's done, dead, murdered. I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to do relationship building at Facebook. And I was going to do uh, all my other content was going to move to paid. So that was the model. That was the idea. All right, so the question you're probably wondering, actually, maybe you're not wondering this. Maybe you already know. Why did it fail? Okay, there are three big reasons why this test failed. I'll tell you in just a little bit what I learned from this. Number one, New mediums, new media rarely replaces, rarely if ever does, does a new media that comes in replace an old media. So what I was looking at, so I mean, just to put that in perspective, radio uh, did not replace print. It came alongside it, okay? They existed at the same time. TV didn't replace radio nor did it replace print. The internet didn't replace radio, print, radio, or TV. Okay, as new media comes on, it is not a replacement for something old. It is just something new and now there's more places. Now, my thinking was blogs no longer had a place because the relationship building was gonna be happening um, you know, on Facebook and the content delivery, which was gonna be largely paid, was gonna be happening via email. Therefore, sorry blogs, you're left out in the equation. Dumb, dumb, dumb. I violated one of my biggest rules, which is media never replaces media. It only comes alongside it. They, they, they start to correspond with one another. The other big reason that it failed is that free still rocks. 
you do still need to offer lots of free content. And it just goes back to basic, you know, dating and relationships, right? If you were out in the dating market, if you were going out to a bar or a club or something like that, and you were looking to meet a member of the opposite sex, you wouldn't walk up to him and say, hey, you want to get married? You know, what do you think? You want to move in together? How does that sound? And that's essentially what we're asking people to do when I ask somebody on the very first visit, give me money. Look, if you want to talk to me, you need to give me money. That's kind of like if you want, if you want us to have anything, then I need sex and I need sex right now. Look, any self-respecting person is going to slap you in the face and you're going to deserve it. And that's essentially what I was doing. Again, dumb, dumb, dumb. When we remove the free content aspect, um, we essentially removed the courtship. We removed the dating, and that was a mistake. That was really, really bad. The reality was, there was nothing wrong with free content, just the medium was wrong. The medium had changed. Blogs were no longer the perfect place to do free content. Um, it, it now, I still believe that Facebook fan pages are a better place to deliver your content. Um, there was no reason to throw that out. The, the other big mistake that I made is I threw the baby out with the bathwater. When I made the decision, okay, that's it, blogs don't have a place anymore, I took a blog, my blog, which is, you know, in the top, depending on the month, 3,000 to 10,000 in Alexa. Certainly for this market, it's a pretty good Alexa ranking. It gets a ton of traffic. I had a lot of readers, had a lot of subscribers, had a lot of fans. To get rid of that, to get rid of an existing asset, to get rid of an existing property, again, Dumb, 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 dumb. So if I were starting over again today, so what's the lesson for you? There's one big lesson I'm gonna to get to in just a second. But what's the lesson for you? Number one, if you're just getting started today, all right, if you're just getting started today, I don't recommend that you necessarily go out there and you launch your business or you know, if you're doing information marketing especially, via a blog. I still believe that blogs are, are they, they can have their place, um, they, can, they can be somewhat conversational, they can, they can be what blogs are originally intended to be, which is kind of an ongoing diary. But if you really want to disseminate good, hard-hitting content, I recommend that you do it via an email newsletter, an inbox magazine type format. You need to raise the bar a little bit. All right, you need to increase the perceived value. And right now, blogs are everywhere. The content mostly is garbage. And I still think that that's a big problem and it's not the way that I would want to go and launch it. What I would do is I would launch it with a good, hard-hitting, solid email newsletter or an inbox magazine. And I would have a presence inside of Facebook. I still believe that email is for content delivery and for marketing and Facebook is for relationship building and viral marketing. I'll say that again. Email is for content delivery, free content delivery and marketing, dis distributing your marketing messages. Facebook is the ultimate platform for going viral and for really building that relationship you know, with your customers and fans. So, in, but still, if you got a good property, if you got a good asset like I had, heck, if you've got a blog right now, um, keep it, okay? I actually had a friend of mine come up to me and say, you know, Ryan, I, I went out there and I, I, I ditched my blog and I kind of switched over to this model that you were doing. You know, it didn't work out so well for me. You know what I said to him? It didn't work out well for me either, which brings me to kind of the big lesson. The big lesson is do as I say, not always as I do. Look, right now where we are standing is in what we call the war room of our office. Right on the other side of this camera is our, is our office. And in a later video, I'll actually give you an office tour so you can see what all we do here. But what we have is a lab environment. All right, we got 30 some odd people out there who are always performing experiments. We're always trying new things, not just on the internet marketing side, but in all of our different businesses. The health business, financial business, in the preppers market, in every single market that we're in, even on down to you know, uh, physical goods and import products and chemicals and cleaners, things like that. We're always performing tests and we're trying new things and that's where we learn. But sometimes, a lot of times in fact, those tests fail, they flop. This most recent flop was very public. You know, I had egg on my face big time because I championed it and I made the decision to roll out there with it and it failed, it didn't work. But that's what happens when you test a lot. All right, and, and that's when we're in a lab environment like we are here, we're gonna do a lot of tests and you know, some are gonna work and some are not. So just because you see us do something, don't think that just because you saw us make a little change that it worked. Okay, and don't necessarily jump on unless we say, hey, I tested this and it worked, so now we're moving in that direction. Kind of hang tight, hold your horses. And, you know, just full disclosure, we're not always going to tell you when we move in new directions and things like that. Again, this one was pretty public, um, but, uh, you know, that, that's not always going to be the case. So, 
here's what I, what I want to do for you for, you know, let me kind of tell the story, you know, letting me come clean and, and tell you about my, my big colossal flop. So that one was a flop, right? That was a test that didn't work out. But what I want to do right now is I want to give you three tests, okay? Three tests that did work and they worked really, really well. Three tests that came out of our digital marketing lab and that performed amazingly, amazingly well. The first one was a split pay test that actually allowed us to triple the amount of money that we made by cutting our prices in half. I'll say that again. This test allowed us to triple the amount of money that we brought in by cutting our prices in half. So if you've always believed and you've always been told that you have to keep raising your prices um, if you want to make money and if you've always been kind of nervous to do that, you're right to be nervous to do that. Because right now, today, we're finding that we're making more money by charging less. I have some really cool, interesting split test data there that I want to share with you. We also did another test that was, on, that was related to driving traffic from Facebook ads. Now, if you've been on my list for a while, you know we've been doing a ton of tests with Facebook ads. We were some of the first to start doing it and start really talking about it. So we've been doing a lot of tests with Facebook ads and we got some really cool data. We found actually one button, one little button inside of Facebook that when clicked can effectively lower your traffic costs in Facebook by 30 to 50%. It's a very powerful strategy and I want to get, share that one with you as well. And then a third test that I want to share with you that came out of our digital marketing lab is the, perf the anatomy of the perfect squeeze page. We've been doing tests for as long as I can remember trying to come up with a squeeze page that performed consistently time and time again across all markets because we're in over a dozen different markets and so when we test the squeeze page and it works in every single one of those markets we know we've got a winner and so I want to show you that squeeze page give you the template give you everything that we got to offer so just for watching again I want to give you these three tests for enduring my flop for putting up with me, um, for, for being here to listen and for being here to learn from mistakes. Because hey, we learn sometimes a whole lot more from mistakes than we do from our successes. I want to give you some of our three biggest successes right now. So what you need to do right here below this video, where the arrow is pointing, um, a form should have appeared. And, and, and if it wasn't there already. Uh, I want you to go ahead, enter your email address in there, and you'll be registered and we'll send you out these test results that came out of our lab. Uh, there's stuff that you can implement right away. There are things that I could say, remember going back to the do as I say, not as I necessarily do. These are things that we did, that we tested, and that it works, and we can now report back to you, hey, this stuff works, and it works really, really well, and we know it works, so we tested it across multiple markets. I mean, that's the thing that I think separates us from a lot of the other folks out there teaching this stuff. We actually do it, all right? So I want to give you this data. I want to give you this research. I know you're going to get a lot out of it. I know it's going to save you a lot of hassle, a lot of heartache. So go ahead, scroll down below. They're totally you know, free for you. Um, I just All I ask is that you let me know how it worked out. So again, scroll down below um, act to access it, and uh, I'll see you on the other side.